Eagle has landed. Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to another episode of Arnold Space Station. In this episode, we're gonna have a look at how you can use Web to Case to your advantage inside Salesforce. Uh, if you have been following the videos in this series, please don't forget to click like or subscribe. Uh, and if you've got comments as always, please don't forget to leave them down below in the comment section. Uh, let's go have a look at what we have in store for you today. Okay, so Web to Case is essentially a piece of code that you generate from Salesforce. You then take this code and you embed it into your website or mobile application. And this code shows up as a form. Uh, it then allows your customers to raise a support request um, via your website or mobile application or whichever platform that you've provided for them to use, making it a lot easier for them. So how is Web2Case going to help you and your customers? I think there are two great use cases here. Um, and we have just gone ahead and implemented this for a customer of ours. And as a result, um, what has improved, one, is you empower the customer and allow them to find or get help directly from the platform that you provide them with. Two, from a business standpoint, now all those cases come through to a particular queue, you can then go ahead and allocate them to the right department where required, as opposed to funneling it, th funneling it through an IVR. Um, and it also provides your customers directly with a case number that they can then choose to follow up. So these two can certainly be, especially for support and service businesses, can be quite challenging. Uh, Salesforce makes it quite easy for you to generate this particular code and embed it. So we're gonna go ahead and have a look at how this can be done inside Salesforce. Great, once you've logged into Salesforce, uh, I'll get you guys to navigate to the top right hand corner uh, onto the cog wheel, click on setup and enter setup. Now, once you're in setup using quick find, we're going to search for web. And in here, the first place we're going to go under service is web to case. Now in here, you can certainly have a read of the top uh, piece of content that's here. But what we're gonna need to do is, we're going to need to enable web to case. If this is not ticked uh, and you try and receive a web to case using the HTML that's generated, it's not actually gonna go into the system. So by clicking that particular checkbox, we enable that for the system to pick up. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and have a look at is um, recapture. So I'd highly recommend that you guys, in fact, do set this up. Uh, that way it'll just mean that you're not gonna be spammed by bots and all sorts of things on the internet. Uh, but for this particular purpose, I'm not gonna set it up. Um, I am going to create uh, a little video, perhaps uh, further along the timeline to show you guys how to do this. Uh, but outside of that, we're gonna make sure that there is a link in the description on how you can set up recapture. Uh, just a point to note on that, you will need a Google account for you to be able to do that. The next and the, the, the last section we have under basic settings uh, is a default case origin. Now by, by default, it is gonna actually select web, but you can change that. Uh, I would recommend you guys leave that as is. It's great to know that that case was generated from the web. Uh, you can certainly click on, click on the eyes that exist to get some more information on uh, what that setting actually does for you uh, and how you can use it best. Once we've set up the basic settings, we then get into the auto response email settings. Now, this is kind of cool because then when someone submits a case, they will receive an email uh, advising them uh, as a confirmation that a case has in fact been created by the system. Uh, in here, Salesforce has gone ahead and put in, by default, its generic web inquiries uh, support case created template. You can, however, change that and we will do a separate episode on email templates inside Salesforce. Um, and we can go through a lot more things in there. But if there is another template that you have set up, you can certainly click on this icon here and you can search through all the different folders that you've set up um, and all the different email templates by default that come from Salesforce, uh, but also you can create your own. Outside of that, we can choose to hide record information if required. I'm not gonna do that in this case. 
uh, I'm gonna leave that unchecked. The last thing that we need to consider is whether we want an email signature to be added as part of the template, we don't have to. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna put my name just to show you guys that you can in fact put text. You can also use HTML, but if you are using uh, a text template, then uh, that HTML might not necessarily look as good as you'd like to the customer. So once we've set up everything under web to case and uh, we've reviewed our settings and it fits the business model, uh, or if you're running Salesforce, uh, personally, as long as it fits your model in terms of your customer engagement, you can go ahead and click save. Now that's just step one. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and activated web to case. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually generate the HTML so we can go ahead and put that code into a website. So what we're gonna go ahead and do as part of the next step is click on web to case HTML generator. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give us all the available fields that actually exist on the case. So if you've got custom fields, those will certainly show up um, and you can select those. So anything that has been selected to put on the form will appear on the right hand side and they will in fact appear in the order that the form will display. So in here we've got our contact name, email, phone, subject, description. Uh, in most cases it's recommended that you try and keep it up to four fields or so. Anything more than that uh, sometimes can be a little bit of an issue where customers find themselves not knowing what they need to select. So I'm gonna just add one more field in here just so that I know which company they're, um, they're asking for support from in the event that particular contact does not exist in Salesforce. So I'm gonna move that up so it appears in that order. Um, if you have a portal, uh, you can choose whether that will be available and visible in your self self portal. And we'll go through that in a different series around community and what is actually possible. So I'm gonna uncheck that. So this is quite important because this is the URL where customers will then be redirected to once they have clicked the submit button. So in this case, uh, I am just going to put out in the clouds.com and I'm gonna put HTTPS. If you're unsure about this, I'd highly recommend maybe ask someone in marketing or maybe even your web dev company, what is the thank you page and where it has been set up. Um, in most cases, the thank you page does say thank dash you, but in some cases it might be different depending on the platform. Now, as I was saying earlier on with recapture, we are gonna skip that. Uh, but if you did have a recapture key that you'd set up inside Salesforce uh, using your recapture account, you can certainly click on this and um, choose the correct one, whether it's version two, version three, so on and so forth. You can also enable server fallback if you need to. Um, I'm going to leave that on and I'm actually going to turn off um, recapture altogether and that setting goes away. So once we've identified the fields and we've put in thank you URL and if you need it to put recapture, we're gonna click generate. And now we've got a whole bunch of code on this page. Now what this code is, um, I'm not gonna go into details, but essentially it has details uh, around each field. As you can see, contact name is a field. Um, and it tells you what the maximum characters are based on what's in Salesforce, uh, the ID name so it can map that particular field when it's submitted to Salesforce. And this is all that you actually need to go ahead and uh, either provide to your marketing department uh, or your web dev company, or in some cases, if you're doing it yourself, you certainly can copy and paste that uh, into your website. Um, what I am gonna show you as part of today's exercise is I'm going to copy and paste this into um, my Idle Space Station uh, WordPress instance that we have. Uh, and I'm going to go to a page that I've created called web to case uh, And I've selected the text tab so I can just copy and paste that information in there. And once I click on visual, uh, you'll notice that uh, that will start to appear as a form, uh, as you can see here. And it does include a submit button. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click update. And based on the theme settings that I've got in WordPress, 
I'm going to open this up and you will be able to see, uh, hopefully if I scroll down, so you would need some kind of um, web uh, experience. Even if you're a beginner, I'm sure uh, you guys can jump on YouTube and find some more videos in terms of how to get rid of this space. Uh, I'm not gonna go through that as part of this video, but what I am gonna do is, uh, I am gonna go ahead and try submitting this. I'm gonna create Arnold test, and I'm gonna put Arnold's space station at out in the clouds.com. I'm gonna put in a phone number. I'm just gonna put a random phone number in there. And I'm gonna put the company as out in the clouds. I'm then gonna put the subject as test web to case. Uh, and as you can see this description, uh, you can certainly use some formatting in CSS to make sure it's static if you needed to. Uh, and I'm gonna then go ahead and just uh, type in, hi, I'm having an issue, please help me. Thank you. And I'm gonna click the submit button. So once I click the submit button, uh, it is gonna go ahead and voila, it has redirected me uh, to out in the clouds thank you page. So now that that has in fact been sent, I am going to go to the home um, page where we were earlier on in the sales. And I'm actually going to scroll down, find cases. Uh, if you can't find it in the menu up here, try the nine dots or the app launcher and just look for case. And if we go into cases, um, I am then going to go to all open cases. And uh, there we go. That's the case that just come through. Um, it's got the subject that we put in. If we scroll down, we can certainly see all the information that we put in seems to be there. Uh, it's got the web name I will test. As we scroll down, it's got the description as well. From here, you can go ahead and um, you know go through your normal support process, but that's how easy it is for you to set up web to case inside Salesforce. Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please ensure you subscribe to this channel so you can get all the brand new episodes that are coming up. Please also ensure you share this material if you liked it and make sure you click here for some more videos.